Good morning, good morning guys. I'm Elle and I'm so excited because today I'm gonna be sharing with you a full home tour, which is a video that you guys have been asking for for a while. So if you're newer to my channel, I'm a mom of three, I'm a minimalist, and I'm really interested in intentional living. I also love home design, and I love creating a home that feels calm and organized because I think it really influences how we think about ourselves and how we navigate our day. My phrase for 2020 has been intentional flourishing, and that's the journey that I'm on right now, learning the art of slow living, learning how to be really mindful and intentional about everything. And so that's what I'm documenting on my channel for 2020. So if you're not subscribed to my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any videos. Get your cup of coffee. Let me show you my home. Hey, come on in. So I really think that the entryway is the first impression that people get when they come in your home. So I love kind of setting the tone and setting the mood in my entryway. I have a lot of greenery and a lot of plants. This is actually an old teapot that I turned into a planter, which is kind of fun. I think you can get creative when you're thinking of what can be a planter for a plant. You'll see a theme in my house of a lot of plants. I do have a plant care video that I'll link down below. So I've got some different plants here. And then this little storage uh, unit is great. It's from Ikea, I'll have it linked down below. And it's nice because it holds a large amount of shoes, but it keeps things really tucked away. And I feel like that's really important when you're thinking about the entryway to your home. The less clutter you can have, the more calming and inviting it feels. I got this bench at Walmart, guys. How cute and like Scandi. It's great for the kids to sit on. They can tuck their shoes and boots under it as well. But it's a great place for, you know, me to tie laces if I need to. I also have uh, where we hang Ellie's collar and towel when it's raining. I get asked all the time where her collar is from and it's from an Etsy shop that I'll have linked down below. Then the last thing I have in my entryway is a few pieces of art that is from my friend's mom, who is an artist, and I just love her style. I think it's really like joyful and fun and kind of mirrors my personality a little. <laughs> so moving over this way, I have a big hallway closet. I did do a video a little while ago of reorganizing my entryway closet, and so if you're interested in the systems that I use to keep my family of five organized, I'll have that video linked down below. Another little tidbit that I have for my kids is this behavior chart over here. So I just printed these off on Canva. I'll have a printable for you guys down below. And I went to the dollar store and got some picture frames. That way the kids can, can use whiteboard markers to check off where they are. So this is a behavior chart where they can level up or level down. And then there's a chore chart and at the end of the week they get a reward if they've hit a certain percentage of their chores. I have it at a lower level so it's something that the kids can kind of self-monitor and they like being able to check it off. This little nook is our school drop zone. I did a video on it back in the fall of how I set it up and it's been working really well for us so uh, check that video out in the description. But it's a place where the kids can come in at the end of the day, they can drop their gear, it keeps things uncluttered, they can put school notes and papers that I need to sign there, and it just kind of keeps the entryway from getting too, too cluttered. Um, and it, it was super simple to set up, and I think it makes a good impact. This is our piano. Nobody plays it. In a perfect world, I would play piano, my kids would play piano, but right now, nobody plays it. And we have some records here. I'm a big vinyl fan. This is actually my dad's collection. It's about an eighth of his collection, but I picked all my favorites, all the good ones. And then I've got my record player, which is from Urban Outfitters. Considering how small the speakers are, it's actually got pretty decent sound, and I, I like the kind of vintage vibe that it goes with. Ooh, this is kind of cool. So every year, I make yearbooks. So you think, what do you do with all the millions of pictures that you take of your kids every day? Instead of just storing it in your phone, I like to make yearbook pictures where you can talk about exactly what that year entailed and things that you did that year so your family can look back. So I've been doing that since uh, I was pregnant with Ford, I think. So this is the kids' art table. So they do drawings here, they paint here. The table and chairs were just from Walmart. It's obviously a wreck. The top of the table is a mess. I've scrubbed it a bunch of times. At this point, it's just stained. And then this is a cardboard playhouse. This is really cool. It's super sturdy. You'd often think that for a cardboard playhouse, it would fall apart pretty quickly. 
but it's actually fantastic and we spend a lot of time in here. I put a blanket and some pillows. So sometimes the boys play in here, sometimes Ford will read Cohen a story, sometimes we all just kind of pile in there and have some snacks. They do have a note here though that says, no parents allowed in the house, ever. <laughs> and then over here, we've got a new system that I created and it's been working really well. We didn't have seating in this room and so I created this little bench. This pillow is just from Target and these bins, I think they're cute and they're kind of fun and playful, which is great for a playroom. And I just got them off Amazon. I'll have them linked down below. And I've got the bins categorized by type. So in this one, we've got puzzles. And then in this one is games that we can play together as a family, family game night, or just, you know, anytime really. And then this is the bin that I change out every couple months so that it stays interesting for the kids. Right now it's magnet tiles and they've had a lot of fun creating rocket ships and stuff with the magnet tiles, but it switches out what's in there every couple months. So over here, I've got my diffuser. I have a diffuser in a lot of the rooms of my house. Aromatherapy is a real thing. <laughs> and I think a lot of times when you're wanting to create an atmosphere in a home, people forget about the scent, especially if you have animals. And so I like diffusing oils in my home. I always get complimented that my house smells like a spa, which is exactly the vibe I'm going for really. So I am always diffusing serenity. Sometimes I also mix in some copaiba, some bergamot, eucalyptus, it really depends, but serenity is something I diffuse a lot. So let's move on to some other areas of the house. Down here is the washroom. To be honest, it's a tiny ensuite washroom. There's a sink and a toilet and that's kind of it. I did do a video recently where I made over that washroom. So if you're interested in what it looks like, I will link that video down below. And then in here is one of my favorite rooms in the house. It's the kitchen. These lights were from Amazon and I will link them down below as well as the pot lights. I guess they're not technically pot lights, but those were from Amazon as well and I think it really helps with the Scandinavian feel of the house. And these were not expensive, so I'll have them linked down below. We've had a couple different kitchens in this house. I hated the kitchen when we moved in, but we lived with it for a while and it worked for a while. And then I painted the kitchen cabinets and that made a, a good impact. I will say it started to peel in time and one thing I learned through that process is you're not always saving money by repainting the cabinets. Sometimes it's more of a hassle than it's worth and you are better to just reface. So eventually we saved our money and we redid the kitchen a couple years ago and I'm so thrilled with it. We did Ikea cabinets. Mom hack, if you have kids, do not get the cabinets that have all the fiddly bits. It might look pretty, but it's a pain in the butt to clean. Shaker style cabinets I think are fine, but honestly I think the less fiddly bits the better. These knobs were from Amazon. They came in a pack of, you can get them in a pack of 10 or 25. And then down below I have these poles that are from Ikea. They're leather and so over time they will vincetta and kind of soften up. I think that keeps the kitchen from looking too stiff and modern. It, it brings in more of that cozy vibe that you're going for in the house. These countertops. Friends, these countertops were not cheap. They were by far the most expensive reno in the kitchen, but they make the biggest impact. And I feel like there's places in your home to, to cheap out and there's places like cabinets. And then there's places in your home where you really just want to get what you, what you want and the, and the vibe you're going for. And so this was the countertop that I really wanted. I didn't want it to be too white and I'm happy that we spent the money. This is new. This is just a little bread box that I got off of Amazon because we make our own bread. I'll have that one linked down below. And then moving through here, this is our dining area. We really try to be intentional about having family meals every night. I think it's really important. It's too easy for everyone to sit in front of the TV or eat piecemeal, but it's a way that I deeply connect with my kids every day and it's something that I really value. So this is an amazing table that was sent to us by Article. I'll have it linked down below as well as the chairs are from Article and it's it's such a beautiful design and it's really really high quality. And then the kids chairs are called Nomi chairs and they work from infant all the way up to adulthood. They hold like 500 pounds. You can't tip them over. They're amazing. I'll have them linked down below as well. And then this wallpaper. I get asked about this wallpaper all the time. 
It's from a company called A New Wall, like A New Wall. <laughs> this is typically more colorful than I tend to go to in my home, but I just loved the style and I think that's important too. If something is speaking to you, it's okay to, to go with it, even though it might be a little different than what you typically would do in your home. And then through here is our pantry. Now, I'm in the midst of working on a major pantry makeover. Our pantry is a wreck right now. I'll give you a little sneak peek, but stay tuned for the makeover because, oh, it needs it. <laughs> it's a wreck. This is the entryway that we use most often because our garage is just on the other side of our backyard. I just used a little 3M hook and this is where I hang my purse. And then I got this really cool mirror at HomeSense and I, you know, I like creating little moments, little vignettes of design. I think it just adds character to the home. And then this is the back hallway closet. It's included in my hallway closet makeover. But inside we just keep jackets that are off season. If I'm donating things or selling things on Facebook Marketplace, I keep it back here as well. And then I've got a little hutch where we keep extra off season shoes and stuff. So that works pretty well. This is a large calendar that we use to keep our family organized. So this is where we have upcoming events, we have home projects that we're working on, we write them down here, and then the family calendar. What I like to do is as the day is done, I erase the day. I just kind of like seeing the month dissolve into the next month rather than cleaning it off at the end of each month. So this is my favorite room of the house. This is where we spend 90% of our time. If you were to come over, chances are you'd find all of us hanging out here. It's really cozy and comforting and inviting, and yeah, it's where we spend most of our life. I love Scandinavian home design and I love modern home design. Sometimes it can feel a bit stiff and uninviting, unless you've got the huga element happening, which is like the art of creating coziness. And I feel like I have perfected the huga in this room. So we have two beautiful chairs from Article. These are kind of in a camel color leather chair. And I've got this textured throw hanging over it. And this pillow, I mean, how L are these colors? Everyone jokes that my favorite color is absence of color, and it's true. This was just from Target. It was on clearance. I think I got it for like $5 or something like that. This is the showpiece. This is Estelle. She is my fiddle leaf fig tree. I've had her for about three or four years now, and she now has to have some support with wires and stuff because she was reaching the ceiling. And she's just alive and thriving and living her full-bodied best self. <laughs> uh, this is Ellie's bed. And then we've got our couch. We get asked all the time where our couch is from. You won't believe it, but it's from Lazy Boy and um, it's super duper cozy. I feel like a lot of times with couches, they either look great or they're comfortable. You rarely get both. This is the mecca of all couches. This is a vintage piece. It was actually one of the first pieces of furniture that my dad bought when he moved to Canada 60 years ago, and it was vintage at the time. I think it's from the 20s. This is where I spend all my mornings. Sometimes I'll watch YouTube videos on that if I don't feel like watching it on the big TV. It'll also tell me about my day. I've got my salt lamp here. I've got my meditation pillow in the corner there. And this is just a big bin of my daughter who's seven months old. It's all her baby toys. And so every morning, this is my corner and this is what I create. Let me show you actually. So this is our fireplace. This was part of my Christmas decor, and then I really kind of liked the vibe that it created, so I've, I've kept it ever since. This is new. So this is a singing bowl. I got it off of Amazon. Uh, it's made in Nepal. I would love to know if any of you know what the writing says on the outside of the bowl. I would love to know. I joke that it's probably someone's grocery list, but this is a bowl that is helping me learn to meditate. I'm new to meditation, but it is something that has been really helping me. If you guys want a video on like guide to starting off on meditation, let me know in the comments because I'd love to make that video. So there's two different mallets that you can use for the singing bowl, but the idea is you can either tap the side of the bowl and it rings a tone that helps to kind of clear the clutter of your mind because it gives your mind something else to focus on, 
or you can make the bowl sing by sort of like that trick with wine glasses where you can make the wine glasses play a note. That's the premise behind the singing bowl. So every morning when I've been doing my meditation and by meditation, I mean like three minutes. Don't expect me to be like seeing out my third eye for an hour every day. But I do my meditation with the singing bowl sitting here. It's also where I do my morning devotional. So I've got my Bible and my morning devotional. I do my morning affirmations with my cup of coffee. This little corner is really like a mini safe haven for me. It's probably one of the main reasons why I love my living room so much. This is a lamp that I think was just from Ikea. I thrifted this basket and this was a very overpriced blanket from Anthropology. I got it on sale, but in retrospect, what business did I have spending what I spent on that blanket? It's ridiculously overpriced. I wouldn't suggest it. And then over here, this is from Walmart actually, and it's where we hide our modem and our cables. Then I've got my guitar. This is a guitar that was my dad's guitar growing up. It's what I learned to play guitar on and for my 35th birthday, I believe, my dad gifted it to me and I bawled my eyes out. <laughs> and then over here, this is Sven. This is my Monstera plant. Sven started off very small. To be honest, if you're buying plants this size, you are spending a lot of money, especially plants the size of Estelle that are like over six feet tall. You're spending hundreds of dollars but you don't need to start with a plant this big. I think when I got Sven, he was like maybe this kind of size and he's grown this big in like two years. So if you're playing the long game with plants, you can save a lot of money by buying the plants small and realizing that they're gonna grow over time. And then the rug, this rug was from Rugs USA. I'll have it linked down below. I got it on sale at a steal of a deal and I think it really ties in the huga of the room combined with the curtains. I got those curtains from Anthropology. They were pricey, but I got them on a Black Friday sale. They have very, very similar curtains at Target. I'll link both down below. And then I've got this thrifted blanket that I got at a thrift shop. I actually thrifted that in my first thrift with me video. So that is the main level of the house. Let's head upstairs. So now that the sound machine is off, I can show you the room. This is my favorite thing in Brighton's room, and it's a painting that her brothers actually painted for her when I was pregnant with her. I couldn't find a painting that was big enough for the space that wasn't hundreds of dollars, so I just went to Michael's and got a large canvas, some acrylic paints, and let the boys kind of have at her. And it's, it's beautiful, and I like that she sleeps under it every night. This was Cohen's crib. That was from Ikea, and it's what Brighton sleeps in now. This dresser is also from Ikea. These are the same knobs that are in our kitchen. And this is a picture that Ford drew when he was in junior kindergarten. And it was the day after we found out that we were having a girl. And so it says, it is a girl. <laughs> and he drew a picture of Brighton. I think it looks exactly like her. It's quite prophetic, really. <laughs> This is a cool DIY that I did sort of on a whim. The system I had for hanging Brighton's headbands weren't working for me, and I had these things around the house. I had wooden clothespins, I had these little tassels, and I had a large paper clip actually. It was like an oversized paper clip. So I unraveled the paper clip, I hot glued the wooden laundry pegs to it, and then hot glued the tassels on every other laundry peg. And it worked brilliantly, and I think it looks super cute. It took me like Five minutes. We've got a woven basket from Target that we keep Brighton's laundry in. And then this is a chair that I got off Facebook Marketplace, I think. That was Cohen's when he was a baby and it's where I've nursed, spent many, clocked many an hours on this chair nursing. And this is something I get asked about all the time. This was something that I made. 
and I made it for Dan and my wedding. It was actually the bunting that was behind our head table, and it's really beautiful. And again, that texture really helps with creating huga, that sense of coziness and comfort. So that's Miss B's room. Should we show them the rest? Let's do it. This is our laundry room. If there's one thing we did right in the design of the house was have the laundry room on the same floor as all the bedrooms. It makes laundry so easy. I do wanna plan a big laundry room overhaul. Let me know if that's a video that you guys would want to see in the comments below. It's really kind of lackluster. I mean, I'll show you, but there's not a heck of a lot going on. For somebody who's as into home decor as I am, it's a pretty lackluster laundry room. This is where I keep the next load of stuff that needs to be washed. I've got a little hanging rack. I've got a hanging clothing line that's retractable. And then my stackable washer and dryer. One of you brilliant ladies told me in the comments that I can actually switch this door so that they both open this way. I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know that was a thing. And when I do the laundry room makeover, believe me, that is something I will be changing. So moving over this way, this is my linen closet. I do have a whole linen closet organization video. I'll have that linked down below. And then over here is Cohen's room. Now I'm not gonna show you Cohen's room only because we are in the midst of redecorating it. We're doing a whole room overhaul. So that is a room reveal video that is gonna be coming soon. So stay tuned for that. Let me show you the boys bathroom. So we've got a shower and a bathtub. That's where the boys and Brighton actually take their baths. And I got this cute rug off of uh, Society6. Obviously our sink. This is a print that my dad got because the name of the painting is called Brighton by the Sea. So over here is Ford's room. For Ford's room, we went with like a woodland theme because he loves animals. So he's got his shelf here, which is a mix of books and Lego and dinosaurs. And then we've got a tent over here. This actually used to be in Cohen's room, but Ford enjoyed it more, so we switched. And he loves hiding out in here. It's where he keeps all his stuffies. He's got a little bit of Lego in there as well. And he loves having his little private time in his tent. And then this bed is from Ikea. This bed's kind of cool because it can go low like this or you can flip it over and it can be used as a bunk bed. There's lots of Ikea hacks on making it a bunk bed, but also it can be where the bed is up top and then you have like a school desk underneath. It's really versatile and it wasn't too, too expensive. So I really like that. And now let me show you the master bedroom. So this is the master bedroom. And again, I really like to keep it calm and serene. I've got a bedspread and a throw pillow that are both from Target. I think it's the Hearth and Hand line that I got it from. The side tables are from Article. One of the things I love about them is that they're soft clothes. So in the middle of the night, if you're getting something from the side table and then you wanna close it off, you don't have to worry about waking up your partner. This is my side of the bed. And so I've got some extra water to fill with my diffuser and I've got my diffuser going. This is the only fake thing you'll find in my house. Actually, there's two fake plants in this house. I'm such an imposter. <laughs> this is a fake fiddle leaf tree. And that's because fiddle leaf trees really like a lot of light and that corner just doesn't get the light. So I wanted the look, but the tree wouldn't do well there. And then over here, is where I get ready in the morning. So I've got all my hair stuff here. I've got my makeup underneath the table. This side table is beautiful. It's from Article. And I've just got a couple little pieces. I think this one was from Target. And then this is the other fake cactus that I have. Again, our bedroom doesn't get a ton of light. So fake plants are kind of the way to go. And then I've got my full length mirror. So if you follow me on Instagram, when I'm shooting my outfit of the day pics, it's always in this mirror. Okay, so this is the bathroom, and I did a room reveal video on my YouTube channel a while ago now, but I painted these cupboards this beautiful robin's egg blue, and I'm so happy I did that. I was a little nervous that I would regret it, but I love it. And we have a big bathtub. 
Are you guys a bathtub person or a shower person? Or are you someone who loves them equally? I am definitely a bath person. If I'm washing my hair, it's always in the shower, but I literally take a bath every single night. And so I actually have my tablet left over from last night's bath. I'll watch a Netflix show or some YouTube videos. So I've got all my masks and scrubs as part of my nighttime skincare routine. And then these prints that get naked and I hope your day is as nice as your butt. Those are both from Society6 as well. Um, I think I typed in the phrase that I wanted it to say and you can custom order prints. And so I just thought those were kind of cheeky and sort of tongue in cheek, which is appropriate for like the adult bathroom. And then down here, I've got my boob rug. And a lot of times people are like, Elle, your bath mat looks like a pair of boobs. And I'm like, that's because it is. <laughs> then over here, we've got our shower coffin. I hate this shower. It's so, so tiny. It literally feels like you're showering in a coffin. I'm 5'9", my husband's 6'4". Neither of us fit in that shower particularly well. So that is the second level of our house. I'm gonna take you upstairs now to our loft and show you guys what's hiding up there. We have a half level, and a lot of people always ask, where does that second set of stairs go? You're about to find out. I'm planning a nook makeover. This is something I'm gonna do in partnership with my friend Danny from the Diaries of DIY Danny. She's gonna build something custom here. Right now it's just the Play-Doh corner. <laughs> But I feel like it's a space that we could do a lot with. You guys let me know in the comments. What are your ideas? What do you think we could do in this space? So this is our loft. We've got this cozy chair that I've had for, I don't know, probably two decades. That was a hand-me-down from a friend of mine. And then a couple years ago, Alexandra Gator did a room makeover in our loft. So a lot of these elements are because of Alexandra like these prints that the boys made. Ford made the green one, of course, because that's his color, and Cohen made the blue one. And Alexandra took the boys on the porch with some acrylic color and just let them, you know, design as they wanted. And it creates some beautiful kind of modern abstract art that's custom because it's them. This is a play area. We've got some of the toys that the boys love playing with. And then this is something that gets a lot of mileage whenever there's friends over. It was a hand-me-down from someone at Dan's work. It was her kids. We've got a little couch that actually converts to a double bed. So if we have guests over and then over here is my little workout nook. So I've got my free weights. I've got my treadmill and this pegboard as well as the workout table is something that my friend Danny made when Alexandra and Danny did their buyer DIY series. One of the things I love about Danny's DIYs is she really focuses on quality and creating pieces that are gonna stand the test of time, which you don't always get in the DIY space. I can do my tricep dips and use it as a workout bench. The quality is totally there. So the last thing I'll show you is this beautiful custom light. This actually was made by a local designer called Tiffany Pratt, and she created it for Dan and my wedding. We got married outside under a big oak tree, and that light hung from the tree, and then my dad turned it into a functional light afterwards. And so I love that every time we come up to the loft, it's something I can think about. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below what was your favorite room of the house. If you're not subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you hit subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Also make sure you're following me on Instagram. I'm on Instagram stories all the time. I'm at l.lindquist. I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!